In this tutorial, we're going to tackle the uh, ever-present question in mathematics, are the graphs of these equations parallel, perpendicular, or neither? Almost every single algebra book that you open has this question. And it's one of those questions that uh, I've never really understood why it exists in so many algebra textbooks, but it's good to show how this problem is done. Because this question exists in almost every single algebra textbook, it belongs to the algebra group. The skill itself is just determining whether equations, uh, th whether equations graph as parallel, perpendicular, or neither. In other words, if you graph out some equations, uh, are their graphs parallel, are they perpendicular, or are they neither parallel nor perpendicular? A few prerequisites for this skill. Uh, you need to be able to solve an equation for a variable, and that is sort of why you spend so much time in mathematics solving formulas for specific variables, so you can get used to that idea. The second prerequisite is to understand the slope-intercept form of a linear equation. M here is known as the slope of the equation, the steepness of the equation, and B is known as the y-intercept or the vertical intercept. Now you also should know that lines with the same slope or steepness are parallel. So if you have a line that has that steepness and a line that has the same steepness, those two lines are considered parallel. You should also know that slopes with opposite reciprocal slopes are perpendicular. In other words, if you have a line that has a slope, let's pretend, um, 3 eighths and a line that has the slope a negative 8 thirds, those two lines, having those two different slopes, would be perpendicular because to get from the first slope to the second slope, you'd flip it, in other words, take its reciprocal, and you'd attach a negative to the front of it. Now let's see if we can use that information to determine if these equations graph as perpendicular, parallel, or neither. First thing you're going to need to do is put these in slope-intercept form. So let me write out the first equation, 10x plus 3y is equal to a negative 21. To get this in slope-intercept form, we have to just have y equals some stuff. In other words, get y by itself. So, a couple ways you can think about doing this. You either already know, you just subtract 10x from both sides and then divide by 3, or if you're not an expert at that, then you should be able to list out the stuff that's happening to y in terms of the order of operations. For example, zoom in on y, just pretend as though your world exists around the letter y, the, the variable you want to solve for, and use the order of operations to talk about what's happening to it. Are there any parentheses on it? No. Any exponents on it? No. Any multiplication? Yes. So the first thing that happened to y is it got multiplied by 3. After it got multiplied by 3, it became a 3y. And then you start asking yourself, okay, are there any parentheses on that 3y? No. Are there any exponents on that 3y? No. Are there, is there any multiplication or division happening to that 3y? No. Is there any addition happening to that 3y? Yes there happens to be an addition of 10x happening to it. You're adding 10x to it. That's the only stuff that's happening to y. So we're going to undo all that stuff. And this is uh, the method I've talked about in the past, which I call tying the knot and untying the knot. Somebody's hiding the value of y from you by tying the value of y up into a mess. They multiplied it by 3, then they added 10x to it. You have to untie that knot by undoing the last thing that they did. So the last thing they did was add 10x, so you're going to undo adding 10x. Well, the opposite of addition is subtraction, so you're going to subtract 10x. And then you're going to undo their multiplication by 3. Well, the opposite of multiplication is division. Mathematically, we I'm saying the opposite, but mathematically it's known as the inverse. So you say the inverse of multiplication is division. Now let's go ahead and do these things. I'll subtract 10x from both sides. On the left-hand side, 10x minus 10x becomes 0, and then you just have a lonely old 3y there. On the right-hand side, I have a negative 21 and then minus 10x. Those are two 
different terms. They're not like terms, so you cannot combine them. That's as good as it gets with those two. The next step that I tell myself I have to do is divide both sides by 3. So I'll divide the left side by 3, and I'll divide everything, every term, on the right side by 3. When you do this, you'll get y by itself is equal to a negative 7 minus 10 thirds x. And if you really want to write that in slope intercept form, that'd be y equals a negative 10 thirds x minus 7. And the only reason why I'm writing it that way is because some people really love to have uh, slope intercept form written perfectly. Um, notice that I took the negative when I took the 10 thirds x out front, I took the negative with it because you have to take the operations that are attached to your um, terms and move them with your terms. All right, so that was the first equation. So this equation is taken care of and solved for y. Second equation won't be so bad because all we have to do is add one. So it was y minus one is equal to 3 tenths x. I'm gonna add one to both sides to isolate y and you get that y is by itself equals 3 tenths x plus 1. To determine whether these lines are parallel or perpendicular or neither, we're going to zoom in on their slopes. The slope of that second equation is 3 tenths. The slope of the first equation is a negative 10 over 3. Those are definitely not the same slopes, so they're not parallel. Now let's check to see if they're perpendicular. Is negative 10 thirds the opposite reciprocal of 3 tenths? We'll take negative 10 thirds, flip it, and then attach a negative to the front of it. Negative times negative becomes positive, and that's exactly what that is. If we flip it and throw a negative on it, it does become the second slope. So yes, these are definitely perpendicular. There we go. Not much else you have to do with a problem like this. Just to let you know, though, had the slopes not been parallel nor perpendicular, you would have said that they're neither. These equations are neither parallel nor are they perpendicular.